This video is about, um, if you guys saw the live stream last night, it was uh, testing out the new RX02, which I have right here. Um, and I posted a video this morning, actually, of me testing it uh, last night riding um, home. Um, and I shot it at 1600 ISO because we were testing basically the low light capabilities and to see where the grain and everything was. And I was actually really impressed with the low light conditions. Um, some things that weren't um, good, in my opinion, is the focal length for wearing the camera on the chest at that angle. It just isn't um, something that's appropriate, I feel. But I think this is the ideal focal length to wear up on a helmet. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to, I'm going to show you the helmet I use. See that? It's a hotline helmet. <laughs> and uh, the gimbal attached to it and how I attach it to the helmet. And then the final piece is putting the camera on top of it. and. Um, Today I'm going to, I'm not going to film a hotline or anything because for these test videos, I, re I really don't like to waste people's time with that kind of stuff. Um, I didn't really reach out to anybody anyways. So I'm going to go right into the city and I'm going to um, do like a chasing strangers, you know, I'm going to see what I can get into. I mean, we're in New York City here, so uh, you just step out the door and something's bound to happen, so. Um, let me put this camera back on the charger. It does need a little more charge. All right. So yeah, let's let me show you first. Let me start by just showing you the helmet and what I've done to it to make it, uh, uh, in my opinion, hold the gimbal better. So. This helmet is a Bell Falcon Mips. I'm in no way or shape or form um, sponsored or anything or really even promoting this helmet. I mean, you can see it's got some dents and stuff because I've traveled with this helmet and uh, when you pack it up with a bike, sometimes it gets banged around. Um, but the reason why I got this helmet um, is it's, uh, I'm always looking for where the vents are on the helmet because I don't use a traditional GoPro mount. Um, I think they're too clumsy and there's too many things that can be loose and rattle and stuff. So I try to get the gimbal as close and flush to the helmet as possible. So first thing I do is I look for a helmet with a nice, you know, channel in it. And this one had a really nice centered channel on it. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. So. The second thing I did, and this is what the inside looks like. It also has MIPS, which is cool. And it was also like $50, which was really cool. Um, this little gummy thing's actually falling apart. It's kind of gross. It's from my sweat. <laughs> um, anyways, so the second thing I did uh, is I got some gaff tape. And those of you who are photographers or familiar with production stuff, um, gaff tape is a uh, tape that's widely used in production, it's kind of a fix-all, um, last kind of like duct tape, but it has like a, a kind of a texture to it. Um, it blocks light. And um, what I did with it is I, I doubled it up and I made like a little bridge here. Can you see that? I made like a bridge and the gimbal sits, you know, in this area. So I built it all up so I can have the flattest surface possible because the helmet's round. So when you put a flat thing on a round thing, it doesn't want to sit perfectly. So what I did was I built this up so it was more flat here. And then I, you know, covered up some more gaff tape and tried to clean it up as possible. Um, one, th one thing I did skip, um, I didn't mention is when you're wearing a camera on your helmet, on your head, anything on your head, obviously, you want it to be as centered as possible. Because if the camera's too far forward, your neck, everything's going to be pulling forward, obviously, and it's going to um, really, really hurt um, your neck after a while. So centering the gimbal is the most important. So I wear my gimbal back here 
So it's on the top of my head when I'm tilted forward slightly. It's pretty much centered. You know what I mean? It's, it still hurts after you wear this thing for over an hour. You're going to start feeling it and you have to, that's just something you have, I deal with. <laughs> but uh, so once you find the center point, mark where your gimbal is. That's what I did. I took the footprint here of the gimbal and I placed it down. And then I was like, all right, that's a perfect spot for it. I'll tape around there and build my uh, flat surface up. So now that we had the flat surf, I had the flat surface up. Um, this the WG2 gimbal. By the way, all of these items are in my Amazon store. They're always linked in the description of the videos. Uh, I believe it's linked in this video. Let me see. Yo, Sentry and Romano with another twenty pesos. Appreciate you, dude. I'm gonna send this over to Cooper Ray. We're gonna get coffee or something with these dollars you've been sending over. Uh, let me let me see if this is actually yeah. It is, it is linked. So um, in the description, it says, I shot this video using these items purchased from Amazon. Obviously, you guys are, you're not new to YouTube. I, you know, anything you guys buy through Amazon, I get like a small cut or kickback on some of the stuff. So um, if you do buy anything, check out those links. It does help the channel. But that's where you can find the link to this gimbal. You can find the link to other things that I've used. Um, this uh, adapter that or it's not even adapter it's it's actually a, a, a new plate that goes on the wg2 and it accepts the rx0 uh, with the quarter 20 screw here so put the gimbal on here um, with the quarter 20 screw and what i have here is the, a quarter 20 screw that actually screws into the other side of the gimbal now this side goes inside the helmet and this is probably the sketchiest part of the whole situation. Um, it's because there's a screw in your helmet. So if you were to get in a crash, it's not the most uh, ideal thing <laughs> uh, to be you know, riding around with a screw in your helmet that's facing your skull. So keep that in mind. This is not, I don't recommend doing it this way. Uh, this is just the way I do it. And uh, if you guys find a better way to do it, then let me know. Um, this is the most secure way right now for me with this helmet. So this is what looks sketchy. It goes, it goes under, let me see. Can you see? Yeah. It goes under the MIPS and it looks, it looks pretty bad on camera, but the screw is actually a little bit further down than it looks here. Uh, it doesn't touch my head at all. Uh, and then you see the screw pops through there and then this side hooks up to the gimbal and then you want to get a uh, number two phillips oh shit i fucked it up this is going to be hard to do an overhead of this so i'm just going to screw it in get a number two uh a park tool screwdriver if you have one if not any number two works <laughs> thank you jason from affinity cycles with your fancy screwdriver. Uh, and I like to slide the gimbal, there's a little wiggle room and I like to try to slide it all the way forward so it may, hits the, the front of it hits the bridge that I made with tape. And as you can see, you don't need to like tighten it super tight on there. I mean, obviously until it stops spinning, but it's going to have a little bit of room to, to wiggle around a little bit. And I like to uh, line this. This is like a little LED indicator uh, when it's on and stuff. Um, I like to center that so I know the gimbal center and then tighten it down. So there you have the gimbal on the helmet, just like that. It's uh, flush from the outside. The inside, sketchy. <laughs> Very sketchy but it's a very secure mount and it works great um velcro straps yeah straps i'm getting i'm, I'm reading uh some of the live comments here i've tried straps in the past um the the mount i know safa uses straps on his helmet um he has a, like a a mount that goes around which is a good way to do it as well um it just doesn't 
um, it doesn't hold on the helmet as sturdy, in my opinion. It gets more, there's more wiggle, so. Um, so here is that. Now let me set up the, um, the arc zero on it real quick. So you take the arc zero. Um, this part's kind of important, actually. Um, which way the gimbal faces. So you can set the gimbal to go this way here. Or you can push this in and flip it and have the gimbal this way. It works either way. So. If I was to plug in audio or power, if I have the gimbal set this way, you see how the, um, the 3.5 jack and everything is right here on the inside? When I do that, I can't plug things in properly. And it's actually uh, better to do it this way for me. And I think that's the way the gimbal wants to go anyways. But you can do it both ways. And then you take the gimbal pop it on there. Now check it out. The audio and everything's on the outside. So I could, with a very loose cable, I could, you know, have the, the camera charging and have audio running into it and it would still be free to move. So that's the idea. The idea is to be able to record continuously, say like monster track or something without having to stop. Uh, by the way, Monster Track is coming up. So if I do feel like I have this camera dialed in uh, as good as I have the GoPros, then I will be using this camera. Um, if I still haven't figured it out, I'm not happy with the picture quality, and I, uh, and I end up returning this, I will probably shoot this, the Monster Track, on a GoPro Hero 7. So in case you guys were wondering. So this is the part where you balance the camera. You just slide the gimbal... For the arc zero, it's pretty easy. You just slide it all the way over, about. There we go, that's centered. And then you just twist this to lock it, and you're balanced. Now all you do is turn it on. Hit this button. There we go. Now, we are balanced and ready to roll. I'm really happy, lo really looking forward to this. Uh, the only difference between this in the GoPro setup, as far as like the camera, other than the one inch sensor, all the positives, some of the negatives that I noticed right away are the, the focal length is, there we go. The focal length, like I said, isn't as wide as the GoPro. And the lens, when I put the GoPro on, the lens on the GoPro is to the left. It's all the way here and it actually is center. This lens is slightly off, which is, not going to be noticeable, I don't think. We're going to go test that now. But um, those are the two things that I noticed right away. But that's what it looks like. Um, that's all I really wanted to share with you guys. So um, if you guys have any questions, uh, you know, throw them in the, in the comments there. If you guys are new around here, um, you know, my name is Terry Berenson, and I make cycling rant related videos. If you like what you see here, I'm trying to do more of these, like more live stream tutorial type videos um, kind of going on a rampage lately and doing a daily one daily video um, if not two sometimes with these live streams so um, appreciate any uh, feedback good and bad I'm all ears so appreciate you guys for listening and uh, I'll see you guys on the next upload <laughs>